slide. Let me go back. Um, remember, sometimes the pictures are not sitting on the base. Now, the first one, it's not a polyhedron. Notice it's got curved sides. Um, this is actually a sphere, and we're going to cover spheres, I believe, in section 11.8. Spheres will not be on your test. So the test only covers 11 to 5, 11 5 to 11 7, and then the surface area extra notes that we're adding in. Number two, it's a rectangular pyramid. Now, if you told me it was a square pyramid, technically we don't know anything about the base edges on number two. We don't know if these edges are congruent, if they had congruent sides on it like that or all had numbers listed then we could say it was a square pyramid but because we don't know for sure if these are all the same size i would label this as a rectangular pyramid um, when you're identifying the faces remember the faces are all of the polygon shapes so i've got a rectangle here i've got one in the back i've got one on the side here I've got one in the front, and then I've got the base at the bottom. So there's actually five faces. And then it's got five vertices. So remember the vertices are here. One, two, three, four, five. And then your edges are here. And there's eight of them. Euler's formula is faces plus vertices equal edges plus two. So if I add faces plus vertices, five plus five is 10, and then edges is eight, eight plus two is 10. So this Euler's theorem is just a way to confirm that the numbers that you got here make sense. Everybody good on one and two? Let's try the next one. And that was the slide I was on before. So again, what I'm gonna do is, again, this video will be posted on YouTube. It's gonna be, have today's date and it'll say GH period. So if you miss anything that we go over, you can always go back and watch the YouTube video. Now, this is the only day that I'm gonna see you this week because tomorrow we're back to the A day and then on Thursday and Friday, there's no school. So the homework, that I'm assigning for you guys is due a week from today. It's due next Tuesday. So um, you're gonna watch the surface area of cones and cylinders video. It's super short. This was actually the more difficult of the surface area. Um, so the cones and the cylinders are easy. So you're gonna watch that video. You're gonna do the homework for it. And then you're also gonna do the warm ups for the cones and the cylinders and the pyramids and the prisms. I've actually made an assignment on Canvas and I put both warmups in it if you just wanna click on it there. And then when I see you next Tuesday, we're gonna go over um, both all of the surface area warmups and then we're gonna go over the homework for cones and cylinders. You do not have any tests or quizzes next week. It'll be the following week. Okay, so nothing this week and nothing next week, but you do have a test and it's gonna be on all the surface areas and all the volumes. So it's gonna be on 11.5 to 11.7 plus the surface area notes that we've added in. So my advice to you as we're going along, have your formulas written down somewhere. Um, I'd have it on a piece of paper. It might be easier to reference than trying to look through your iPad and go through all your notability files. As you encounter these formulas, I would be keeping a running list. Everybody good so far? All right, so for 11.5, this is where we talked about um, determining if something was a polyhedron. Um, if it was, so remember, for something to be a polyhedron, the sides have to be a polygon. It can't have any curved sides to it. Um, and then we also were, learned how to identify faces, vertices, and edges, and to use Euler's theorem to verify our count. So again, to name a prism or a pyramid, you're gonna name it by the shape that is the base. Now, remember, 
sometimes like in this particular problem here and I think I'm on the wrong now again remember this is my base shape right here notice that you would think that base means it's sitting on the bottom but the base shape is whatever you have two of so I have two pentagons making this a pentagonal prism there are seven faces 10 vertices, 15 edges, and again, you can confirm that with faces plus vertices equals edges plus two, and 17 equals 17, so my count is good. Everybody good on this one? All right, now let's go over the homework. Now, I'm gonna zoom into each question so you can see it, because I know it's kind of tiny. Um, if you need to clarify what's written and walk you through it, I will. So it will go nice and slow through each question. Everybody good so far? All right. Let's go ahead and here's number one. Same thing that we just did in the warm up. Any questions on that? All right, here's number two. Notice that we do have congruency marks on the bottom, so we can actually tell that this is a square. So it's either a square prism or you could also call it a cube. And then it has six faces, eight vertices, 12 edges. Pretty good on that one. All right, number three. Can you still see my screen? It's a Zoom screen. Just a zoom screen? Okay. How about now? Okay. Can you still see it? Okay, all right, let me show you number four. Everybody good on the first three? All right, here's the next one. Now this is a trapezoidal prism and the trapezoids are here. Let me go ahead and highlight them for you. So the trapezoid is here. So it's not sitting on the trapezoid base. And then there's another trapezoid back here. It's like the, the front and the back. So you would find that area of the base, which was the trapezoid, there's two of them. And then you would find the perimeter of that base and multiply it by the height. So again, these are the more challenging questions of this chapter. Again, cylinders or cones are gonna be a lot easier and the video is super short. Any questions on number four? Let me show you number five. This one's actually sitting on its base. It is a pentagon. So it's a pentagonal prism and this time we need to use that formula that one half ans in order to find the area of the pentagon so my apothem is 7.6 a pentagon has five sides and each side length is 11. remember that formula only works for regular polygons and i know this is a regular pentagon because of all these congruent marks here Any questions on number five? All right, number um, six. Yes. Uh, why did you do the two times 209 times 10 o'clock? 
okay? So this formula down here is this. So this is the two times the base area plus perimeter times height. So my base area was the pentagon, which is right here, and then perimeter, five sides, and each side length was 11, and then the height of my prism is the 10. Okay, thank you. I forgot to do the... Uh, okay. Pretty good on that. So technically what we're doing here is we're finding the area of each face. And that's what somebody asked me in the other class. Could you find the area of each face separately and add them up? Yes, you could. Um, but if you just use the formula, um, perimeter times height, and then find the base areas and times it by two, um, you can find it that way also. So again, you should be writing all of these down and then you can use that piece of paper for your test. Okay, number six. Now, when you have a rectangular prism, it doesn't matter which side, which rectangle you choose as your base. So some of you may have said, well, I'm gonna have my base as the 10 times seven. My base when I did this problem was down here and I did the 10 times two. So my bases are here. So if this is two up here, so is this two over here or back here. So my base or my bottom is the rectangle that it's actually sitting on 10 times two. And then the perimeter of that would be two plus two plus 10 plus 10. And then that would be 24. And then the height of my prism is the seven. So you, everybody should have ended up with 208. Would be good on six. Let me move over to seven. This is a hexagonal prism. And again, we're using this formula, one half apothem times number of sides times side length. Now what was nice about this worksheet is you didn't have to do any special right triangles and figure out the apothem or the side length. Um, it was all given to you. So again, you're just gonna plug in your given. My apothem was the 10.4. There's six sides in a hexagon and each side length, you see all the little congruency marks was 12. And then the eight is the height of your prism. So this is height, this is the side length, and this was your apothem. And then you plug everything in you should have gotten 1,324.8 feet squared. So on the test, you'll be able to use your calculator and you'll be able to use your formula sheet. So be comfortable with using your calculator. Pretty good on that. All right, let me show you number eight. So this is a square pyramid. So each of the sides down here are five. This is your slant height. So what we're gonna do is find the area of the base, which is five times five. Then we're gonna find the perimeter, which is five plus five plus five plus five, or five times four, and that's 20. And then the slant height again is the 5.6. So we're using this formula now because this time when it's a pyramid, there's only one base. So the base is the square, and then you'll find the perimeter times the slant height, divide by two or times by half. Any questions on eight? All right. Here's nine. Now, for number nine, you can't use the formula when it's a rectangle. Remember that formula only works for regular polygons. 
a rectangle is not a polygon because all sides aren't congruent. So what you're gonna need to do when it's a rectangular pyramid is you're gonna find the area of the base, which is down here, which is gonna be five times two, which is the 10. Then what I'm gonna do is, I do have two pairs of congruent triangles. I have this left side triangle and the right side triangle. So that's gonna be base times height, so two times 5.6 times a half, or divide by two. So that's the left and the right. Then I also have the front and the back, which is here. And again, one half base times height. So five times 5.1 divide by two. And then you find each of those areas, and then you add those five numbers and that'll give you 46.7 meters squared. So when it's a rectangular pyramid, we're basically finding all of the faces separately and then adding them all up. Pretty good on that? Yes. Anybody? Anybody still need it? Can you still see my iPad? Yeah. Okay, all right. Anybody still need nine? All right, let's move on. I think it's on the next page. I'm just gonna screenshot this. Okay. All right, any questions? Anybody need me to go back to any of the problems? All right, um, yes. Yeah, I, number seven. You want me to explain it? Okay. All right, so for number seven, let me go through it. Let me erase some of this stuff. All right, so this is a hexagonal prism. The shape of my base, notice, is this hexagon. So the top and the bottom are both hexagons. And then I have my rectangles or my parallelograms that are the lateral faces. Now, notice that they all have congruency marks here. So this tells me that this is a regular hexagon. And each side is 12. Over here, the 8 is the height of the prism. And the 10.4, this is the apothem of my hexagon. So what I need to do is I'm using this formula to find the surface area. I'm going to find the area of the base, and I'm going to multiply it by 2 because I have two hexagons. And then for the lateral faces, Remember, lateral faces of a prism is perimeter times height. So to find the lateral area, I would take 12, and I know a hexagon has set, uh, six sides, so 12 times six, and my, or my lateral area, all the areas of all of these on the sides are gonna, is gonna be 72. The area of my hexagon, I'm using the formula 1 half apothem times number of sides times side length. So again, my apothem is 10.4. The number of sides in a hexagon is 6, and each side length is 12. I'm going to multiply those uh, four numbers, 1 half, 10.4, 6, and 12, and my base area of the hexagon is 374.4. There's two hexagons. So I'm gonna now multiply that by two and then add in my lateral area, which is 72 times, actually that's just the perimeter. Sorry, this was just perimeter. And now I have to take perimeter times height 
so 72 times 8, and that'll give my lateral area. And then once I do that, I get the 1,324.8. Okay. Any other questions or need me to go back to any of the anything? Um, Ms. Corey? Yes. Can you go back to um, my 11 real quick? Okay. Here's number 10. This is a pentagonal prism. I'm sorry, pyramid. And again, we're going to use the formula because this time it is regular. Notice we have congruency marks, so it shows us that that's a regular pentagon on the bottom. So we can use the formula base area plus one half perimeter times slant height. So this 11.1 .1 is the slant height. This is my apothem. And then the seven is the, the side length. So for the base area, I need to do the one half ANS. Again, we're not doing any kind of trig or any kind of right triangles here. We're just plugging in the apothem, the number of sides times the side length, and then multiply that answer by one half. And you get 84 for the area of the pentagon. Then you'll take the perimeter, which will be five times seven, which is 35, Multiply that by the slant height, which is the 11.1, .1, and then multiply it by half. Add those numbers, 278.25 meters squared. Pretty good on 10? Let's go to 11. This is a triangular pyramid. It's an equilateral triangle. Um, each side is 10. Notice they've labeled the numbers here. So because it's an equilateral triangle, I can use this formula. So my base area is this triangle. So I'm gonna do one half base times the height of it, which is here, and I get 43.5. Then I'll find the perimeter of that base triangle. Each side is 10, so 10 times three is 30. And then I'll multiply it by the slant height, which is up here, which is the 12.3 inches. And then divide by two. So 228 inches squared. Good on number 11. And then the last one, number 12. This one's actually a right triangular prism and again, it's not sitting on its base. The base is this right triangle and the one that's in the back there. So there's a right angle here. Notice that this is actually a triple. So this side's three, four. But if you forgot that it was a triple, you would do Pythagorean theorem to figure out that this side is five because you need to find that side to find the perimeter. Three plus four plus five, and that was 12. To find the area, you could have just multiplied three times four, divide by two, and you get six. The height of this prism, because again, it's not sitting on its base, the height is one. And it's 24 yards squared. And that's it on the homework and the warm up. Yes. Um, can you scroll back up to seven? I want to see it. Right. Yes. Thank you. I'm just going to screenshot it. Okay, let me go over there and make it bigger for you. All right, there you go. Okay, so again, I would be writing all of these formulas down. Maybe provide a picture next to it just so you have a visual when you're taking this test. So your homework now is to do the, the surface area of prisms and pyramids warm up. 
watch the video for surface areas of cones and cylinders, complete those notes, turn that into Canvas, do the homework for surface area of cones and cylinders, turn that in, and also do the warm up for surface area of cones and cylinders. However, the warm up assignment, it has two warm ups in it, so just do it together and then turn them both in together. So you have three things that you need to work on between now and next Tuesday. And then Ms. next. Corey? Yes. All of these are due next week? Yes. Fine. Okay, because I don't see you again this week. And I don't want you to have to do it all tonight and then turn it in tomorrow because my DE period, they got two days to do it. Um, and I'm not going to have you turn it in on a day that we don't have school. So, um, so if you think you're going to forget about it, I highly recommend that maybe you work on it today um, and get it done and over with. Again, the video for surface areas and cones is a lot easier. Um, and it's a shorter video, so it's an easier formula. Any other questions on prisms or pyramids? Okay, so my advice to you is practice with these formulas, practice with your calculator. So um, when it comes time to take the test, you're not gonna be confused on how to use any of these things. And again, when you're doing the homework, use the calculator that you're gonna use for the test. All right, any other questions on prisms or pyramids? Any other questions in general? Um, I've been looking at the warm up that we have to do next week, like due Tuesday, uh -huh. and I don't get the warm up sheet. All right, let me go ahead and look at that. Um, let me switch out of this. This one? The second one. The this, second one, like the second page. The second page? Second. All right. So for this one, you're still going to go through and um, identify what each thing is. Um, here you're going to have to realize that you've got a right triangle in here, and you're going to have to figure out the different slant heights and things like that. So, is the triangle on the bottom of the right triangle? Okay, so let's label what they've given us. So K is 3, and H is 4. So what I can do here, the slant height, this is a triple. It'll be a 5. And then um, down here on the bottom, it's going to have to be an equilateral triangle. And then from there, you can figure it out. Like, because all you have is the like, line going through the middle of it. Like, how would you find it? So what we can do here is figure out that each one is equilateral. So let's see here. Um, so if from here to here, if this was like the radius, so then I know this side's going to be six. It'll be double. Does that make sense? Like, why? Why? Because from the height, which is going to be in the center right here of your triangle, it's going to be going to be going from here to here, and it's always going to be half of the side length. Okay. Does that make sense? And then from there, you can do the rest of it. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Let me go back to this. All right, so work on that warm up. We'll go over it on Tuesday and also the one for cylinders and cones. So that's pretty much it. Any other questions? All right, um, I know we still have till 8.50. We have about eight minutes. Any other questions for me? Um, Ms. Corey? Yes. The lesson for a uh, surface area of cylinders. I'm sorry? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
All of the videos now just look on YouTube. Anything that I post will be on YouTube. I'm not gonna post the Zoom videos. So what do we need to do by next Tuesday? By next Tuesday, you need to do the warm up for, there's an assignment and it's got the two warm ups together. So it's surface series of prisms, pyramids, cylinders and cones, that's one assignment. You have to watch the video for cylinders and cones, complete the notes, turn those in, and then do the homework assignment for cylinders and cones. All right. So three things by next Tuesday. All right. And again, the video for the cylinders and the cones is short. Any other questions? All right, so I will be on um, checking my email in the afternoons. Um, so if you do have questions, just email me. If I find there's still confusion, um, we can schedule a, an additional Zoom meeting in the afternoons. Um, but we still have time. We have all of next week to get questions answered. There's no tests or quizzes next week. All we're gonna do is cover notes next week. And then next Friday, not this Friday, but next, I'll be assigning you the, the test review. And then we'll review that following week on Monday and Tuesday, and then your test will be on that Wednesday. Well, yours will be on Thursday. Any other questions? All right, so I did release the quiz answers, um, so you can actually see um, the question that you got wrong um, and see the correct answer if you got anything wrong. So if you have any questions on your quiz, just let me know. Um, it's kind of hard to go over it because people got different questions and they got it in a different order. So if you have any questions on your quiz, let me know. Um, just send me an email. That's it. All right. Have a wonderful day and I will see you guys next week. Happy Easter and I'll see you next Tuesday. That's it.